My name is Paul Wallace, I'm the Africa Editor of The Banker, and I'm here with Mitchell Elegbi, the Chief Executive Officer and Founder of Interswitch, which is a Nigerian company that provides electronic payment services to financial and non-financial companies um, in, in, ma in many parts of Africa. Mitchell, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Um, the Central Bank of Nigeria and the government, um, they have a strategy at the moment to uh, w what they call uh, to create um, a cashless society, which is basically to increase the volumes of ele electronic uh, transactions in uh, in Nigeria, a country where cash transactions still dominate. Um, is the country making progress on that front? Yes, the company is making progress. Uh, I think the first thing to note is that uh, people use the term cashless, but when you speak to the regulator, the central bank, they tell you it's more of less cash. So it is not a case of zero cash that we're looking at, but to significantly reduce the amount of cash in play. Um, various policies have been put in place out there. One of them is the need to introduce um, point of sale devices at merchant locations. Um, the number of point of sale devices moved from about um, 11,000 to about 150,000 in one year. Um, what that basically tells you is that a lot of the banks put a lot of effort into driving this particular initiative. In terms of actual transaction counts, what we have seen is that month on month there's been serious growth coming from um, from this cashless initiative. Of course, there are still challenges around infrastructure, telecommunication has been a key one. But overall, what we have seen is there's been very strong month on month growth. What the central bank has now done is to say, have a look at the success in Lagos, where it started from. They basically added five other states to move it into uh, a few other states to see how this can also pan out in those few states. Okay. Uh, you mentioned infrastructure being uh, one of the barriers to, um, t to growing the number of electronic transactions. What are, what are the other challenges? Well, telecoms is a major one, clearly, because um, we use mostly debit cards, and these transactions require online real-time authorization from the bureau's accounts. The other would naturally be power. These devices need to be powered up. Um, there's a limit to how much battery uh, runtime you can have. So having constant electricity would be a good way to go to encourage uh, the, the growth of electronic payments. Okay. Um, are there also cultural issues? Um, w when I go to uh, countries throughout Africa, people always say that whenever, uh, even when people have, say, debit cards, um, they prefer to use cash, or they prefer, to, uh, or even getting them to use checks is is difficult in in, in many cases. Is is that um, in, is, in your experience? Is that what happens in Nigeria too? That people take a while to get used to the idea of uh, cards and other forms of electronic payments. That is correct. Uh, and I'll give some examples. Here you are used to this concept of giving tips. Uh, in our markets, what you usually find when you have a lot of cash in play is that you have things like, I do not have enough change for you. What that basically means is that you've paid some money, you expect to get some change back, but the change is not complete. That change that is not complete is considered as a tip. The only difference is that you do not willingly offer the tip, but somehow you are leaving the tip behind because somebody uh, has just told you that there's not enough change to, to complete that transaction. That process has become um, common across the various merchant locations. So we introduced a point of sale device that does not require you getting change from that point of view. What you find is that some of the tips that people used to get, they don't get with point of sale. Okay? And so you hear things like the point of sale is not working, um, this is, is faulty and stuff like that. You need to really insist, and then you discover that it was never really faulty. They're just an party to using point of sale. So that is one particular issue, which is cultural, okay? But that can be changed by putting the right application at the point of sale to promote the use of uh, cars to offer tips, okay? The other uh, possibility is the way the market structure has developed. And by that I mean the traditional model is that most of the people that have got these locations have employment somewhere else. So basically they have created this business and they've asked someone, either a relative or someone from the rural area to join them there and basically man this particular location. The way 
Nigerians like to haggle is that you go somewhere, that you're told this is the price, and then you say, what is the best price I can pay for this, or what they call, what's the last price, uh, the term they use. And after a bit of haggling, you get something uh, agreed. What that basically does is that it creates room for the sales boy or the sales girl to retain some of the monies if he has haggled properly, okay? And so the next result of that is that when you bring a point of sale in there, that source of income goes away. Again, that is resistance. Okay. How are we dealing with that? There are various loyalty schemes you can put in place to encourage the sales boy or the sales girl to encourage the use of of, of point of sale terminals. And one way we have done with done that is to introduce what we call the tipping point. Basically, we are saying. For every transaction you allow the terminal, you, the sales um, agent, the sales butler case, you get a certain point being allocated to you. These points you can trade in later to qualify for some sort of raffle draw where you can win a lot of expensive, what you would have called expensive goods like washing machines and stuff like that. They can take to their homes to use. So there are different incentives we are putting in place. But yes, like in every other part of the world, their cultural issues and uh, the ability to make tips available electronically is one area that we need to deal with if we're going to see widespread adoption and come up with a, a, with initiatives to, to make that happen. Cool. Okay, and and you work with a lot of banks; they're amongst your uh, biggest clients. And um, how much do they save on costs? Um, the more uh, the more electronic transactions become um, become sort of part of their uh, part of their business. Okay, there have been studies around the kind of costs you save where you move from a traditional brick and mortar branch to a, a situation whereby you use ATMs, point of sale, and cards uh, in general. I think that is already well established. I do not have exact figures, but I think from what we have seen, a lot of banks have actually created incentives for their customers to adopt the electronic means of, of transacting as against the traditional brink and uh, motor branches that they have. That basically tells you that they expect to make some significant savings by encouraging you to go electronic. Electronic banking is far cheaper for them to carry out than, uh, than uh, cash banking, if you like. Yeah. Mitchell, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you.